Greetings, sisters and brothers. I hope your weekend is going well. This is Milton Alimadi, publisher of Black Star News, adjunct professor of African history at John Jay College here in New York City, as well as member of Ugandan Diaspora for Democracy and Accountability. We are part of the organizations that organize the protests outside the UN in September during the UN General Assembly. The turnout was tremendous and General Yuid Museveni did not show up and neither did Sam Kutesa, his foreign minister. In addition to being afraid of being confronted with this massive protest. Obviously, they're also concerned about the ongoing trial of the Chinese businessman, Patrick Ho, who was arrested last year in November and is now on trial for bribing several African officials, including Sam Kutesa and General Yoweri Museveni. The trial is ongoing here in federal court in New York City. So Kutesa may be afraid that if he steps on U.S. soil, maybe there's an indictment that would be unsealed, and perhaps they would ask for diplomatic immunity to be waived so that he could be arrested as well. But that is not the issue that I want to focus on today, sisters and brothers. Today, I just want to remind us in diaspora to continue our activism. Let's not wait until there's another brutal incident such as what we saw in Arua. It must be sustained effort. So every Ugandan in diaspora, please join some sort of organization of Ugandans. If none exist in your city or your town or the country where you reside, in diaspora, please contact other Ugandans and form an organization because it's always easier and much more effective to work collectively with sisters and brothers. And that is why we formed our organization in New York. And as I said in my last update, we plan monthly activities. So for example, in November, we will have a lunchtime protest outside the Ugandan mission to the United Nations. We'll disseminate information to people as they pass by, diplomats walking toward the UN, which is one block away from Uganda House, which is Ugandan mission to the UN on East 45th Street in Manhattan in New York City. And some of the information that we will disseminate will include updates on the latest acts of atrocities by dictator General Yoweri Museveni, including the brutalization of Yusuf Kawoya that the whole world saw when he was assaulted by several plainclothes members of the Ugandan armed forces, hit several times repeatedly all over his body with rifle butts, then hauled into a van where the beating continued. It was videotaped and it was sent all over the world. It went viral on social media. But we're going to make sure that we also get it to all the stakeholders who will be receiving our newsletter here in the United States. And that would include members of Congress, senators, as well as members of the House of Representatives. It will include uh, people in the State Department. It will include human rights organizations such as Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and it will include the Pentagon as well. It will also include uh, General Electric, which is the company that signed the multi-billion dollar oil refinery deal in Uganda. We protested at JGE headquarters, as people know, in June, and that protest uh, also resulted in the arrest of Mr. Kajubi when he visited Uganda. And as some people know, I wrote an editorial recently that appeared in the New York Daily News, and it mentioned that arrest. Uh, the article that I wrote actually was to educate 
Kanye West, who obviously does not fully know what kind of vicious, brutal dictator he's dealing with when he visited uh, him and Kim Kardashian, uh, visited dictator Yoweri Museveni. So I wrote an article for the New York Daily News, as well as the GRIO, uh, outlining all the crimes committed by General Museveni and his obnoxious statements in the past, such as when he said people who were captured uh, into slavery uh, must have been stupid and deserve to be captured. I mentioned that in the article. I mentioned how he um, praised Adolf Hitler in the past uh, to the Sharia publication, uh, saying Hitler was a smart man and just made a mistake by going a little too far. That's what he said, a little too far, <laughs> by wanting to conquer the world. Obviously, he shares many of Hitler's attributes in terms of his own regional adventurism, invading Rwanda in 1990, leading to the genocide in 1994, invading Congo multiple times, leading to the deaths of 7 million Congolese, invading South Sudan in December 2013, leading to the vicious civil war that's now claimed to an estimated 300,000 people. Sisters and brothers, this man cannot go on causing this type of mass atrocities in the entire region. We in Uganda should put as much pressure as we can on the Western entities that have been supporting General Museveni all these 32 years. We must say enough is enough. Stop sustaining this brutal dictator with financing for his budget, with weapons for his army, and with training for his army. And now we have many allies, so we must work with those allies. So for example, Ugandans in the United Kingdom, I'm very, very, very happy to see you working closely with Member of Parliament, Paul Williams, who is clearly a solid friend of Uganda. And he's already confronted UK government officials in Parliament demanding to know why the UK is still training uh, Uganda's armed forces, and he's now put them on the defensive. Ugandans in diaspora in the UK, Ugandans in Europe, Ugandans back home. If you have any information, look him up. Just Google Member of Parliament Paul Williams of the United Kingdom, and you'll see his contact information. Send him information on a regular basis. Just as we also said last time, please send it us to us here in New York as well so we can disseminate it. And I gave my email, which is mmalimadi at gmail.com. So please send me that information as well. Work with other friends of Uganda in Kenya. A member of parliament, Babu Owino, who welcomed Bobby Wine and had that massive demonstration in support of Bobby Wine in Nairobi. Google his information, send him information as well. I'm sure he also has access to certain Western officials, US officials and British officials. We must use every channel possible. We must work with all our allies and potential allies. Ugandans in South Africa, get in touch with uh, Julius Malema and his organization. Send him information, the details of the atrocities being committed under dictator General Yoweri Museveni. So this is just an update to remind uh, diaspora Ugandans, we must remain energized. We must remain uh, uh, dedicated to the liberation of Uganda and do everything that we can. And we in diaspora actually play a very critical role in what happens in Uganda. So we must also play a critical role in the government in Uganda. We submit over a billion dollars in funds remittances to Uganda. We remit funds on a regular basis to help our relatives in Uganda. And that is actually a significant foreign exchange, uh, source of foreign exchange earning in Uganda. So we have a right, in fact, an obligation to ensure that Uganda has a government 
that is representative of our aspirations. And certainly dictatorship does not represent us. So we must start thinking of a government of national unity in Uganda to replace the Yoweri Museveni dictatorship, number one. Number two, many people are already looking towards the elections two, three years down the line. Before we can even start thinking of those elections, we must make sure that the playing field is leveled in Uganda. So we have an ally in the EU. After the 2016 election that was stolen by Jerome Museveni from Dr. Kiza Besige, who won, and is actually the legitimately elected ruler of Uganda, the EU nonetheless came out with a set of recommendations for election reforms in Uganda. So what we need to do now is go back to the EU. And since the EU is a significant development partner in Uganda, we must insist that the EU cease financing the government of dictator Yoweri Museveni if he refuses those election reforms. And he must be given a deadline. At the very least, the election reforms must include an independent election commission. We cannot allow the thief to also decide who won the election. It doesn't make sense at all. And Ugandans, let's be serious about this. If you are a member of any of the political parties, whether it's the FDC, whether it's the DP, whether it's UPC, whether it's JEMA, any entity, and even whether it's the People Power Movement, do not support any of these leaders of these entities or of these parties, if they decide to participate in the next election before electoral reforms are conducted. Because once again, dictator Museveni will steal the election and by having participated in the election, we would legitimize that theft. So insist to your leaders that they must demand that the only circumstance under which they will participate in an election in Uganda is after there is election reforms, an independent election commission, and the thief, Yoweri Museveni, does not declare who won the elections. So these are my recommendations. And I have another suggestion, so that we can maximize our efforts and share more ideas increase our capacity to impact the governments that support Museveni, let's have a joint meeting of all Uganda diaspora organizations in the United Kingdom. Maybe we can do something of this nature next year in the summer, maybe in June or July. Let's start thinking about it now, let's start planning it now, and let's make it happen next year in June. Diaspora can be very powerful. We have to maximize our potential, and we could do that by having an all-diaspora conference next year in London. Please send me some ideas about this if you're interested in organizing and planning this diaspora conference. Send me a message to malimadi at gmail.com. M-A-L-L-I-M-A-D-I at gmail.com. Sisters and brothers, stay strong, stay Pan-African, stay dedicated to the cause of liberation in our motherland, Uganda. May the Creator continue to protect you and to bless you and your family. Thank you.